Hi everyone. Do you remember this? The spot welder? I bought this almost a year ago and I've had some great f***ing use from it. Unfortunately, during my big f***ing charger build, uh, it developed a fault with the soldering iron, which is a, a real shame because the unit is actually quite solid and it works quite well where I've got it on my workbench. So I want to try and repair it and get it working. I don't want to buy another soldering iron, which just takes up more space. So I've got a few spare parts here. We're going to open it up, see where the fault is, and figure out what the f*** happened. What is that f***ing noise? Ah! I also bought this f***ing swear box. I think we're going to need this during this f***ing episode. Come with real, it's the next episode. These are the parts we're going to be using to incorporate within our spot welder. It's a very basic soldering iron and it was inexpensive off eBay. It's a T12 type Heiko replacement, basically fitting the soldering tips like that. I like these type of tips because you can buy all sorts of different profiles at the end for whatever soldering requirement that you need. The controller board itself is actually this component here. It takes a 24 volt, uh, one and a half to two amps is sufficient and actually can heat this up quite aggressively. The temperature is uh, controlled via the amount of current that you put through to this tip. So this uh, potentiometer here controls the amount of current coming in. So there's no actual temperature control on this. So you're kind of having to second guess what it is. Uh, maybe later I'll order a, a temperature reader and uh, do a follow-up video. The LED here is a red-green LED which basically indicates that it's heating up and green which means it's reached its optimal current. Uh, in this case the whole thing is then packaged together uh, with a standard 5 core BNC type connector and hopefully we'll try to get this fitted. If it doesn't work then we'll just play with it and see what happens. So how does the soldering iron work? Well it's basically a glorified um, resistor. So you'll put uh, contact on the tip here and you drive current through it, the resistor then resists that current and heats up in that process. So if I was to simply put a 24 volt in there and drive three, uh, three amps through this, this should get fairly hot. In fact, let's give it a go and see what happens. So here we are in front of my power bench supply here. If I switch it on, turn that down to 24 volts. So if I connect this up now along these two contacts here, it doesn't matter which way we put this round, this should get hot. You can see now we're driving 13 amps here at 1 volts because we're running at constant current. Now if I increase the current, it now brings the voltage up to 5 volts. And if I touch the tip, it's actually getting a little bit warm. If I drive more current through there, we're at 1 amp now, running at 9 volts, it's fairly hot. Fairly, yep. Yeah, I don't think I can pop at about 80 de at 100 degrees now. Now we're running at 9.1 volts, but I can go higher. And if you want to see how high I can go, I can drive this even more up. I'm at 1.2 amps, running at 11 volts. 1.3 amps, running at 12 volts. And I can almost smell the heat coming off this. 1.5 amps, 13 volts. 1.8 amps at 16 volts. We're at 2 amps now, running at 18 volts, and it's still going up. We're at 2.3 amps, running at 20 volts. 2.5 amps, running at 2.2 volts, and it should be glowing hot right now. In fact, if you look at it, it's gone red. We're at 2.8 amps, running at 24 volts, and it's red hot. Can you see? That is <laughs> significantly hot. I'll crank that down a little bit. But so good are these tips that I should be able to touch it from one end and in fact hold it without the pliers, without burning myself. And there you go. I've got a red hot soldering iron tip which I'm holding comfortably at one end. Let's see if it'll take some solder when it's this hot. Caught fire there. Yeah, I think this is plenty hot enough. Hopefully that's a good enough explanation of how a soldering iron works. Let's start farting about and go on with uh, disassembling the spot welder. Oh, 
Well, here you go, guys. I haven't f***ing killed myself, so I'm still alive, which is a good thing. Uh, looking inside, it's not obviously very complicated. There's your typical transformer. Big, heavy-duty gauge uh, wires in there to, to drive the current through the spot welder. A uh, very simple micro switch here. Just checking to see if it's unplugged. I keep checking to see if it's unplugged. I don't know, maybe a phobia. But I was surprised to find that the circuit board is actually more complicated than I thought it would be. Uh, there's quite a lot going on in here. And mainly, it's it's quite complicated, if I'm honest with you. I was hoping it was going to be straightforward and we can find a 24 volt supply in here and try to get off that. But I've gone around with my multimeter and checked to see if there's any breakages in the circuit and it doesn't seem to be any. Um, and I've also checked the output voltage of this um, and it's only given me one, one and a half volts. Which leads me to believe that there is a failed component in here, which I don't know what it could be. I can't see any MOSFETs that are here that are burnt out. There is, although on the other hand, a smaller transformer over here which I imagine is what's driving the soldering iron. That doesn't seem to be burnt out or faulty in any kind. But what I have noticed is there is a lot of discoloration here which I think is where the problem may have arisen from. Um, there's basically overheated so much so that the PCB itself has got discolored as you can see over here. Um, so I think that's where the fault is. If I need to fix this, it does look like I need to replace this. So where does that leave us? Well, we'll have to put it back together because I think the spot welder itself does still work and we could potentially look to incorporate a, a separate soldering station within this space because there's quite a lot of space within here or just have some more fun and build myself a separate DIY soldering station. Okay, let's put it back together and see how we can get the soldering iron to work anyway. Finally, it's put together, I haven't plugged it in, so I hope I don't kill myself on camera. I might get a few more clicks because of that, but it's not worth dying for. Right, plug this in, make sure ooh, everything was on. Make sure everything is off, plug it in. Uh, it shouldn't blow up because everything is off, but let's just uh, stand back and... Uh... <laughs> yep, it's, it's all right so far, it's all right. Right, the red button is for the soldering iron. Switch that on. Now, nothing should happen. We know that's faulty. So let's just switch it on and see what happens. Okay, yeah. That was kind of predictable. Nothing happens. The next one is for the spot welder. So this is the thing that makes the little pixies very, very angry. And to be honest with you, I'm not looking forward to this. So normally, something exciting will happen. So. Let's press in and see what happens. You know what? I'm too scared. I put that there. Um, I'm going to do it from a di safe distance, like from over here. Missed! Yes! <laughs> so far, so good. That was a bit scary. I'm going to be totally honest with you. I was in my pants. Right, the next thing to do is just to see if the spot welder spot welds. Just give myself a bit of height here. Still on, yep. Yeah. I've got myself a battery, some nickel strip, and then I think, no, I don't think we'll start on the highest setting. I think we'll start on number one. 
Um, I'll put on four pulse. So I'll put on a four pulse weld and let's see if it welds. Here we go. Well, that seems to have worked and it's done it. It's spot welded on the lowest setting. Let's turn up to number two. Let's see if it does something different. Ooh, sparks. Right, um, turn up to three then. Contact. Oh, what the f Yeah. I wasn't expecting that, that's a bit higher than I expected. All right, let's let's get some safety glasses now because this thing is just getting a bit dangerous. All right, I've got on four. Contact. Oh, okay. I wasn't that aggressive. Now I go to five. Here we go. What the? Whoa, crikey. Woo. All right, okay. Should I go to six? Should I? Should I? Am I going to kill myself? Um, I think I tripped a fuse. Yeah, it looks like I tripped my fuse box. Alright, let's put it back on six, see what happens again. Whoa! I think it's getting more aggressive. It wasn't even four, four P. Let's put four P on and try that again. Whoa! Okay. Should I go to seven? And eight is the highest. I'm too scared. Alright, let's go to seven. I'm going to do it from back here. Contact! I can really feel it. All right, we'll go up to eight, and that's it. If I die, it's gonna be your guys' fault. And there we go. Oh, you know what? That is actually very, very satisfying to do that. Okay, here's the result. Well, as you can see, it's on there, truly solid. Can't even rip it off, oh, I've ripped it off now. But it's actually got the thing stuck on there, the nickel strip. So, yeah, I think that's kind of a success. Sort of, but we still need a working soldering iron. Seeing as I've already bought the soldering iron kit, why don't we just put it together, put 24 volts in there, and see how it works. So I've wired it together. I don't want to bore you with all the soldering, although ironically, we are creating a soldering iron here. So it's very simply soldered onto the iron, uh, iron itself at the back here. I've reassembled it together, put a tip in, and connected up the relevant ground and voltage in wires here. LEDs put in. I've put an additional heat sink on there just because I know that that chip does get a bit hot. And let's twist your arm and see what happens. So I've currently got two, um, well, I've got three amps going through there um, at 24 volts. But the control board itself has regulated it down to half an amp at 24 volts. Now if I turn this potentiometer, you can see the light changes to green, which means that the resistance in the wire has achieved what it needs to achieve, and it's cut it off now. now if I increase the current going in, it'll put in more current through the um, resistance of this soldering iron, and obviously the light will turn red. When it reaches that, it'll start turning to green, but here it's always going to kind of stay between green and red. And I can feel that that soldering iron is fairly warm, there's heat coming off it. Let me see if I turn it up a bit more, put more current through there, the LED turns redder, well it should turn redder. Now I've got this set at maximum, so obviously that is actually fairly warm. So I put some solder on that tip there. Uh, perfectly hot. Not too hot, not glowing red, but that's ample. I've reduced that. You can see the LED has turned green until it needs more current. It's cooled down. And there you go. It's trying to maintain that uh, flow of current through, through the soldering iron itself. So I think that was fairly successful, but we can't leave it like that. Why is everywhere? So through the power of video editing, Let's tidy that up and put a housing around that. Well, I know some of you are going to make comments about why the hell didn't you just buy a soldering iron? Well, I could have, but that's not the point of this channel. I've wanted to open up my spot welder for some time now. And as the old saying goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, it clearly broke and I wanted to open it up and share what I learned with you guys. And also take the time to build my own soldering iron because I need a high powered soldering iron. What for? Well, 
If you don't know, it's for the Bing Friendly Charger or the BFC. And if you don't know about it, it's linked up here. Feel free to check it out. And I've been building that and updating people who are following me on Twitter. So if you haven't already done so, feel free to link with me on Twitter. But what about the f***ing swear box? Well, ain't f***ing cool to f***ing swear all the time. But seriously, I've got a lot of young viewers out there and I don't want them to misunderstand that this little bit of light entertainment we had with the beeping uh, is not cool to curse. So don't do it. If you want to communicate, communicate without cursing. Top tip from Nerdville. Now, as always, if you haven't subscribed, feel free to do so. Like, dislike, entirely up to you and do leave a comment. It's always good to share this channel because that's what this channel is all about, sharing the knowledge. And as always, I'll see you on the next episode.